Oh boy, did you step in it there, friend. Oh, Vendor One, Ferrister. This is the topic I've wanted to talk about for a while. Um, and I know I was posting some comments and Avengers 1 stuff that was kind of jokey, but there is a serious subject matter here to deal with. So Avenger 1, you found out, probably the hard way, that quantity has a quality all its own. Barrister, you, I'm hoping, have recognized, and I saw your comment, and I believe you have, that painting an entire demographic with a single brush is really inappropriate to do and actively encourages people to be, engage in a hate mob towards that individual that has a differing opinion. This is actually very common. One of the things that people in the Star Citizen community don't really recognize, and I, you know, I'm going to call you guys both out for this, is you, you rarely ever see a data-driven argument in this community. In the gaming community in general, right? It's mostly an opinion and uh, appeal to emotion or appeal to authority type logical fallacies that are thrown out. So in this one, you know, we really do need to understand the demographics of the gaming industry and the demographics of Star Citizen. It is pretty easy to suss out that the major demographic is the space dad. Now, if you look at the larger gaming industry, and I've included some links, I'll probably do some B-roll of it as well too to show you the stats. 76% of gamers are single player gamers. That's your space dad. There's a lot of reasons why, and inside of there, there's a whole bunch of different buckets in, in, as well. You know, the average age of the gamer is around 33, right? They got kids. Or they have some other obligations that don't let them spend all this time. And that was kind of where the fallacy of, of Avenger 1, right? Train, you know, bring escorts, blah, blah, blah. That does not work. As someone who's done mining, there is no way a miner will ever survive. It doesn't matter if they have escorts because the time to kill is 2.5 seconds, even less. It's like literally less than that you shoot them three times and they blow up right it, there, there's no stopping that so on one hand you know i really do empathize and get with avenger one and i agree with him right like what ferrister was saying was really really unfair and i think ferrister has acknowledged that and agrees with that as well there is a subset now the other side of that too ferrister is what you're asking for is actually very difficult to deliver on Right, like I am a narrative player. You want people to call you and reach out and you know give you a bit of a story or at least some context of why they're doing this. And I would love everyone to do that. I you can look at my channel, right? Like my player interaction, my pilot journey kind of highlights how I like to interact with other players, but it's super difficult. Most people won't talk back. And it also showed a bit of a lack of awareness towards the current state of the game. Anyone that's calling you while you're in your ship trying to do direct message is almost certainly exploiting a bug, right? Those are people, whether they're on the PvP side or on the PvE side, and they're trying to track down that terrible griefer. When they start doing these things, they are the actual exploiters and they are the little legit griefers at that point. A griefer is someone who exploits the game, not your time. It's unfortunate. Like I come from DayZ and Avenger One referenced it. I'm probably gonna show some B-roll here too of DayZ Underground. That is an amazing community. If you want a narrative, sign up for it, get into the whitelist, and play during those time periods. You will have people that will interact you with that way. Then go and wait for the public to come on through, the public days. Completely different experience. In DayZ, Avenger wanted to call you out on this one, the constant call of Care Bears against the PvPers in a 100% PvP-focused game is just as bad there as it is in Star Citizen. And again, it comes down to demographics. Gamers are mostly single player gamers. When they dip their toe into the multiplayer, and like it's only 20% of the, of, the, of the industry play multiplayer. And even from there, there's only like 4% that do PvP only. In the PC market, they're all globbed up in like Call of Duty and Warzone and like Apex Legends, Fortnite, etc. All the free to play ones. Mikey and Noob. This is why when people come in on the free fly or whatever and the uh, like referencing PvP and stuff like that, they're usually looking for a free to play because all the rest of them are free to play in that, you know, in the top 10. It's in the data here too as well. Um, so we'll see, you know, you see an issue there, hopefully, in that the numbers that can be thrown against each community is significantly different. It's completely asymmetrical. And I think 
I'm pretty sure it seemed like it. I made a joke about it being, you know, holding a gun to your head and distressed. But, you know, it did come off a little bit that way because I'm pretty sure Avenger 1 got hate on um, because of his reaction video. Now, that was a mistake on his part. He acknowledged it and how he presented it. And, you know, I feel for him on his frustration level. He's put how many thousands of hours in now? Not just to improve his own ability. Like, I've benefited from his stuff. And my doc, like my journey through the PvP side from Space Bad to PvP -er, I've always been one, but I don't do a lot of it, is well documented here too in my pilot journal series. I just got good at this game and I've been playing it for three years. It takes a lot of time and effort and the guys that have put that time and effort in shouldn't be vilified for their skill level. Now they, uh, on the flip side, they shouldn't also dismiss the fact that you have four kids, a job and etc. and you cannot put the hours in or maybe you don't have the budget to buy the gear, although mouse and keyboard are some of the top players, right? So. Don't stress too much on gear. It's a little bit more figuring out the settings and having people to help guide you through because we have no guides. So I joined like the skunk, the skunk work, because you can see on my channel and stuff like that. They were looking for fighters. I wanted to learn how to be, be a better fighter. I got linked up with Echo 1 and 9. We now have Itachi. We have Mongoose. We have a whole bunch of people. Waffle, blah, 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 blah. Whole bunch of really good pilots that took us through. Edisel, he's my guy. Um, they took us through and they, we, we did it team based and it's been super enjoyable to the point where I now host a PvP tournament. It's not huge. We're on our fifth one. It's going to be in April. I would love to see Avenger 1 and Ferrister's community come to this event because I'm trying to do the same thing Avenger 1 is doing. It's trying to help people go through this journey and learn how to enjoy it. Now, I think there's a bit of a fallacy in his part thinking that everyone will love it in the same way that he does. It's a little egocentric. Same thing with Ferrister here. A little egocentric to see it from only your perspective and think people should enjoy the game in the same way. You were a little more balanced about it because your production quality was higher and you had more time and it was a little scripted, right? But I think in an open debate, we would have gotten basically to that same spot. Although, in a dialogue between the two of you and, you know, maybe myself, I would love to host it and I would love to moderate it or be a speaker in it, because honestly, I think, you know, you know what, yeah, dig that. 32 would be the ideal host. He is the chillest motherfucker in the verse, right? I think that would be a good one. Actually, he would be a fantastic host for that. Maybe we should reach out to him. All right, side, sorry, tangent. Dig, love your stuff. Love the new uh, uh, overlay too. Uh, the graphics, right? Because like Ferrister, like Dig, and like myself, we don't actually show our face. So, you know, that's also unfair to people like Avenger One or the Dark Claw or Cutlet or, you know, Moist, who you can actually see their emotional content and stuff. Whereas us, you can only get it from our voice. We don't, we don't show our face. But the flip side of that is we're narrative players. So my face isn't, like, takes away from what I'm trying to do, right? Like, I'm not trying to be Johnny Morgan, the streamer. I'm trying to be Old Man Johnny Morgan, a character within the verse and multiple characters, you know, like Jean Morgan <laughs> or Johan Morgana, the, the Dutch guy, I don't know, I'm working on stuff. Don't hold me to it. So I love that you guys came together and I love that Avenger 1 was very humble about it came back. I dislike that it probably was a hate mob that caused him to, to wake up to that. Um, and, you know, Ferrister, man, like when you push this type of message, people take that way too hard and you outnumber us so much, right? Like, look what happened to the Dark Law. It was a hate mob that got him banned from Twitch. That's what it was, right? They, they basically submitted a whole bunch of BS complaints about him all at once in a very focused, coordinated manner. That is griefing, right? That is actually griefing. They went after someone's income. Why? Because he's a PvPer. And PvPers are all bad and they're all griefers. It's a very dangerous attitude to have. And it's very unfair. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't griefers, and this is also something that I thought Avenger 1 hand-waved away a little bit. There are a significant amount of griefers in this, in this community. But they're not the bulk, right? Like, we ran into one recently as an org. Uh, they were a Russian one, right? They just started harassing us on our org night. So we cleaned up our operational security, we made a lot of changes, um, and things have gotten better, obviously. War kind of, I think, has blocked them from harassing us now, um, which is not really a good thing. Uh, and it's difficult, right? So this is only going to get worse, too. We're all going to share the same space very soon. There will not be thousands of instances of the verse. There will be three. Three shards. That's it. 
right? The, the probability of meeting people just go through the roof. And I have wish and would love people to get good mics, take the time, use the in-game VoIP, and have those conversations and build those narratives together. There is some work on CIG, and we do have to accept the fact that, like, it's not there to do that yet, but it can get to that point in the future where our touch points and our funnels will be much more appropriate right like we don't have the space and they don't have the game mechanics in yet to do that nor do they they should like this, this is not the time to do that that's more of a beta thing once you have feature complete and you're working on content right when we get there we'll see some more stuff but they, they're, they're obviously thinking like chris has thought it from the very beginning what do you think squadron 42 is right that's a funnel for the single player person to come in and join that multiplayer 20 percent of the market and try to get in there and then maybe they will dump into the four percent that only pvp Right? Like, I don't even fall into that. I still do mining and trading and all that other stuff. I like just social dialogue time, etc. Now, I don't want to be painted by a single brush as just because I, like, enjoy the challenge of fighting someone who's actually skillful at this game. Because the AI are not. And people are missing out on so much of this. One of the reasons why we dominated in, and we did, right? We were on the board on Jump Town in the first one. We don't know how we did in the second stats, but it felt real good. Um, is we're doing unconventional stuff. We are not bound by these ideas of how Star Citizen should be. We're just taking for it for what it is and trying to make it work. We do a lot of combined arms, right? Most people scoffed at that working, but it turns out Ballista is king in that scenario, right? So having some ground people who know how to run that and who know how to coordinate together and having some big ships like the Connie with an actual fighter wing is, is insanely good, right? And so we're finding all that stuff out and it's super fun. And Ideally, and I know I got a little off track here, you know, what we all seem to really want, especially in the PvP community, for the overwhelming majority of us, is for you guys to have a good time with it. And we know that randomly killing you is not a good time, right? Like, we do know that. And I don't do it for the most part either. I'll generally just go red and let you guys come to me, right? The bounty hunters, and that's cool. But it's not always what I want to do, right? Like, I would like to interact with people more. I'm looking forward to like, disable your ships a bit more and get you on the ground. And then, you know, my loudspeaker outside my ships, I don't have to actually get out and talk to you, etc. and stuff, right? We're just not there yet. And um, for the time being, let's try to meet each other in the middle. So my ask for Ferrister and my ask for Avenger 1 is to come join the next Thunderdome. Bring some of your community. It's a randomized draft, light fighters only. No disruptors, uh, no C788s right now, right? None of the cheese area effect stuff, um, because it is purposely broken so they can figure out the balance on it, etc. But that doesn't make it fun for us to play with. Um, in the PU, different story, right? Like, you can absolutely use it. It's totally, you can use whatever you want. But in, in Thunderdome, what we do is just try to make it really light and fun and easy, match you up, randomize it with people, so maybe Ferrister and Avenger 1 would end up on the same team. That would be dope. So that's our goal, right? So I'm part of the Freelance Fighter Academy. We are loosely attached to the skunks. Most of us are skunks, too. I'm also part of Task Force Bravo. I have some amazing people in there, too. Viral Sun, Durgan, um, Off Grid, etc. Like Carolina Dog, they're great people. Reflectment, real good pilot, pilot there, too. Uh, Play, new kid on the block, right? He's just come around. He's a freaking great kid, too. I don't want to miss any of them. I'm friending some already to call some out, but I, I, I'm sorry, I love you. Manfred, <laughs> Ghost, Dragon Squadron. Uh, there's so many of us, and we have a, a lot of history over a short little time, and you're, you are you are kind of missing out on the team-building exercise that PvP can be. And, like, we have Cobra and Nova that have come and engaged with a little bit to get some of that regular engagement on the table with people that won't be like, no, we have to go to Arena Commander and do this only. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll try a whole bunch of different stuff, right? And we'll figure out what's fun and what work and what's easy to set up and what's enjoyable. But what also builds up our PvP skills. Because it is important in this game to have them. You do not have to be the best at it, right? Quantity has a quality all its own. It's a very famous quote, and that applies in Star Citizen. Avenger 1 can be the best pilot in the world. He cannot beat 20 other pilots at the same time. He'll have to run. But he'll come back with his squad. Six of him, right? A si two wings, six pilots. Against 20? That'd be a real good fight. That'd be an awesome, epic fight to remember. That's what you want in this game, too. There's a narrative in there. There's a really good narrative in there. 
and you can paint that out faster. You have the ability to do that, right? But you got to come out and engage with us to get that story out and find that mutual ground where we really do figure out how to work better with each other so that we can identify the real griefers because there are actual real griefers and they're not defined by the gameplay loop or the demographic that they're in. You'll just find more of them in the space dads because there's more of you. Well, it is. It's a numbers game when it comes down to it. And there's nothing you can do to avoid that. So, old man Johnny, you know I love you all from every single demographic slice in this community. I want us to find some middle ground. I want us to find and have some fun together. And to find a way to avoid the unfun moments when we do come across it. And maybe a way to work around it or something else. I don't really know. I, there is going to be no perfect solution here. There's only the ability to have an honest, open, and hopefully fruitful dialogue and continue to engage in the game and continue to build your skills. Because the easiest solution, obviously, and it's an annoying one to hear, is to be relatively good at the game. It's hard. Chris built a skill-based game here, and it requires a lot of skill. And if you don't play, you get rusty really fast. Right? Like, it happens. So... I get you guys, right? I've gone through the funnel. I'm doing it too. I got to put hashtag, put the time in, hashtag do the work. And it's a lot of fun. You may not get the mega bug like other people do, but when you are able to at least successfully implement a draw, right? Like have a, a situation not completely go Avenger one's way. You may not win completely, but it didn't go his way. Count that as a win, bud. Because you're not playing to kill him. You're playing to execute on your strategies. And you don't have to fall into his game and let his command and control loop get in, get in you. You want to disrupt that. You want people reacting to you. You do not want to react to them. All right. Anyway, that's our little tips there. Love you all. See you in the verse. And try to chill, bros. And really, seriously, let's reach out to Dig. Uh, that, that, that's my call. Dig can moderate it. He's fantastic. All right. Love you all. Cheers. Actually, there is one final part that I want to reference here, and it's to kind of highlight that I'm not just talking out of my ass. If you go through my uh, player interaction series and go to the Pirate Valet one, that is an amazing example of what I'm talking about. All three demographics were represented. I was the multiplayer guy looking for bounties. I took the Pirate Valet's one and went to Grimm. I bumped into a space dad. I thought it was the Pirate Valet. I interacted with him and found out through talking to him that it wasn't. And that we were going to group up and go get them. But because I used the in-game VoIP, the pirate valet was able to hear us. And he joined into this scenario and we had a little micro-narrative around it. And then my reaction at the end completely and utterly surprised the pirate valet. Where we both have a lot of mutual respect for each other. And I'm really looking forward to encountering him again in the verse. That's what I'm talking about. And I think that's what Fer at Ferrister is asking for too from players like Avenger 1. Can you guys maybe make a bit more effort on putting a narrative in and include us in that narrative and you'll get a lot more success out of us when that happens? It was maybe poorly framed, but the intent, right? We got to look past the framing and look at the intent. And the intent on both sides is good. Never forget that. Okay, really done for reals. Love you. A little bit of B-roll in the background. You can see it. I'm going to play a little bit of a clip from the Pirate Valley now. Anyway, cheers, boss. Love you.